We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. Um, I apologize, I haven't been doing uh, segments as frequently as I have been uh, before. Every now and then I kind of just take a break because in all honesty, it's the same evil. Sometimes it's different wrapping paper, but it's the same evil. It's the same talking points and therefore the truth is the same. And so I, I feel like it, it starts to get repetitive. But when I find a story that, that really, I think is more pivotal or more crucial or something that I, I don't really think is gonna be disseminated to everyone properly, like like you know what's going on in China and how Apple shut down the airdrop fun function, doing the, the bidding of communist China so that people can't actually organize and protest and push back, shows, exposes Apple for what I always knew them to be when they got with, with Google and Amazon to crush parlor, like they show with their hand. So, you know, things like that, that you probably hadn't heard about, right? Like, why would they do that? But with today's segment, I had a, a buddy of mine out in, in Chicago send, send over this TED Talk. Now this TED Talk is from 2019 and I believe the guy's name is Calvin Terrell. And the, the title sounds really, really cool. And, you know, when he comes out and, and you know, he's, he's, he's speaking with, you know, very eloquently and he's using, you know, nice vocabulary. He's, he's citing historical precedent. Um, and so it seems really, really cool. And, but my buddy sends this to me and he says like, you know, hey, I like, you know, check this out. I'd like you to do a breakdown, but that's about it. So no real, you know, uh, information on, on even what he thought of it or what it was really about. And it's only a 10 minute TED talk and we're gonna go over it today. So I'm watching it and it starts off, you know what, let's just, let's just get into it. <laughs> let's just get into it. And I'll give you my breakdown as it, as, as it goes along. Here we go. So uh, you might be uncomfortable. I wanna to talk to you about social transformation. Now you need to know that everything I say to you was, is with this intention. So it starts off, you know, really, really cool. I'm, I'm looking at the dude, I'm like, okay, nice, so much socio-spiritual evolution. And he's, and he's about to say that everything that he's about to say is, is, is really for all people. And he's really talking about bringing everybody together, but also being conscious conscious of the, you know, the environment and just, you know, living symbiotically, you know, with the land, with the earth, and we are stewards here. So that makes complete sense. I'm like, cool. Yeah, let's go. The intention is to contribute to the material, social, and spiritual progress of all peoples in a way that causes no harm to the ecosphere. So, so pay attention to that because he says it again. He, he says all people, no harm to the ecosphere. All people. Remember that. This is what he's saying in the beginning. All people. Everything I say today is about that goal, the material, social, and spiritual progress of all peoples in ways that cause no harm to the ecosphere. Because if it hurts other species, if it hurts the earth, if it exploits humankind in some way, we can't call it good and definitely not progress. See, I mean, that just seems to make sense to me, right? Now, quick note, I want you to notice that his shirt has what would traditionally be looked at as African colors. And the, the word over this says decolonize. So that's very important. Remember, he says all people, right? So if it's in what he just said, if the ecosystem, if it exploits people, it can't be looked at as good, you know, all people, all people, okay, all right. Now, this conversation is sometimes tough for people in positions of power people that hold social credibility. They can be very fragile because when we start talking about disrupting the way power is dispersed. Okay, so now he's shifted over to this conversation can be hard for people of power. You understand, he's saying people of power. There's no specifics, just people of power, which, which I, I also agree with. The way it was gained, the way it's hoarded, uh, that means that Something has to be shared. So all of this, I, I, I agree with. People who have power tend to want more power. They tend to not want to give it up. They tend to not want to share it. They like having that power, 
right? That's the tendency. That's not an absolute. It doesn't mean that all people with power are authoritarians or tyrannical, but all authoritarians have a lot of power, <laughs> right? So I agree with what he's saying here. And so, yes, these, these conversations can be definitely uncomfortable and, you know, and sharing power and whatnot. Like what he's about to say, I, can, I agree with completely. I was just doing a speaking event in uh, the East Coast and it really came out in a weird way that some people equate sharing power with losing power. And this sharing, losing power, that synonymous thinking, that has to change. Yes, once again, I agree. And then, then you heard he said, some people, right? Like not all people, but some people. Everything that he's speaking about is, 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 is always, like he's saying, like some people people with with power people like he's just talking about people because i agree like it's just people it's the same it's the same people people can be afflicted by the same things because we are all brothers and sisters and we all are broken so it doesn't matter the race or or the gender you know or even the continent that person is born on we're all susceptible to that to that same we're all susceptible to the same, you know, absolute power corrupting. Absolutely. We're all susceptible to that. You know, even myself, because I'm a human being myself. Right. So I'm with him. If we're going to survive as a human race. Now, I want you to think about this concept. Hurt people. Hurt people. That's not an echo. Hurt people. Hurt people. People that have been hurt. People that are in pain. If they don't deal with that pain, if they don't deal with that trauma, they can inadvertently hurt others. Now on the flip, open hearts, open hearts. That's also not an echo. If we learn to open ourselves, to be receptive to other ideas, other thoughts, we could create a humanity that shares power, shares resources, and causes no harm to the ecosphere. I agree with all of that, right? I agree with all of that. Us sharing, us having conversations, open conversations. That's why free speech is so important. Everybody talking with everyone, everyone sharing their experiences so we can find out how close we are to one another, that we really are one, one race and one family. Um, even sharing ideas that you may disagree with, they're still just as valuable because you're just as valuable. I don't have to agree with what you're saying, but it would behoove me to listen to it because I can still learn I can still learn something about, I can definitely learn something about you, but I can also learn something about myself or even having my ideas challenged will force me to flesh out the truth even more so within my own ideology. It's awesome. It's a win-win, right? It's a win-win. So I'm, he's, we're on the same page. What do we need to do to make that happen? A really amazing speaker. He's one of the best MCs ever, KRS-One said, it's not that we lack solutions to social ills, it's that we lack the courage. We lack the courage to implement those solutions. So I would like to charge that every global issue and every social challenge. So we're two minutes and 30 seconds in, and here's where he goes off the rails, contradicting the previous two and a half minutes. This is really what he wants to talk about. He set everything up as if he's, he's, he's speaking to all people and he's for everyone. And then now the true colors, his true intentions, his true ideological thinking is about to come out right now. A big social challenge in these lands, now called the United States, is rooted in the European spread of their refugees during what we call colonization in the 1400s of the Gregorian calendar. So he's going to use a lot of Gregorian this, and he's going to even speak Spanish, I believe, and he's, and he's going to cite you know, these historical things and come up with all, and at the, at the base of it is what he just said there. He's about to blame white people for all the ills of not only this country, but I believe even the world. He's about to, remember he was talking about like, you know, he was saying all people, all people, but he doesn't mean white people. He means everybody else. When he was saying that, you know, people with power, he was talking about white people, not, not people with power. Do you see what I'm saying? Why, why deliberately mislead in those first two and a half minutes? 
speaking so ambiguously about people when really the next like eight minutes, you're just going to talk about how white people suck and how it's their problem and how they've done all this stuff to us. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it was fascinating. I'm sitting there listening like, yep, you got me. Yep. 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 Wait, wait, Hey, wait, 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 Hey, why are you turning left? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, okay. So that's just going to negate everything you said, right? Oh, okay. Got it. And then the rest of this stuff was just painful for me to watch. Because he speaks in a nice tone, you know, he has good vocabulary, he's, he appears to be intelligent, but everything he's saying is foolish. And it's, it's, he's just an activist. And he's bending history to fit his activism instead of looking at history in its entirety, the good and the bad and the ugly, and then learning from that and moving forward for all people, like he said. That's a heavy charge, right? That all these global issues, our major social challenges, have their roots in the European refugee creation of the concept of whiteness. Yes, he's talking like, he said global issues. He's talking about United States, and now he's talking about global. So he's literally saying white people are, are the root of everything. Not, but, <laughs> and this is what's absurd, is that not only are they root of all evils, but if they're that powerful, then everything that's transpired to this point is all attributed to them that by, his, by his own reasoning, right? Now, he's only talking about like what he perceives as the bad stuff, but what he's saying is that they have all the power and now they have to share, you know, he's talking about sharing power and some people, he was talking about white people. He's like, it's, it's, it's time for you. He probably believes that racism has a power dynamic involved in it. It's no longer, it's no longer just, you know, a person believing in that, that another person is less than or greater than based on their ethnicity, based on their race. That's, he probably believes that there's a power dynamic, which is, which is the changing of a definition to fit your ideology. So he's changing history to fit his ideology. He's changing definitions to fit his ideology. He's just an activist and he, he's presenting himself as an educated man, but he's, he's simply a fool and a racist one at that. He's absolutely right. He, just, he doesn't want all people. He doesn't care about the ecosystem. That was all, that was all just a smokescreen. It was like a suit, like a really, really nice suit, but really what he's gonna talk about is ugly. But you know, he already presented himself with a nice suit, so, it, so what he's saying is supposed to be nice, right? Like, no, it's not. No, it's not. And he's been doing this in 2019, and it's only gotten worse. I told, I told my buddy, I sent him back a message after I watched it, and I was like, he's saying the same ridiculously, you know, unsubstantiated, you know, systemically racist, patriarchy, white supremacist stuff that BLM was shouting while they were burning down black neighborhoods and black, black businesses. These people are just agents of chaos. Now, let me also say this. Um, my name is Calvin Byron Terrell Jr. My primary identity is soul. I have been an agent of a colonial corporatist white God complex, better known as white supremacy. I have been an agent of it, and I have been decolonizing for more than 15 Gregorian years. So everything he, that he just said is absurd. So the implication is that because this system was set up by white people for white people, we're all agents within that system. It's the same thing that, you know, like, it, I'll, I will say this. This is, a, this is a religion to this person. It's a religion. And this is just like with Christianity and we're all born sinners. And therefore we, we need to, in order to, to save our souls, we need to recognize Christ as our Lord and Savior because he took on our sins. They're trying to take that and make this a religion. So, but, but the sin is, is, is white people and we're born already in this. And then, like I said, I've been decolonizing. So he needs, their God is the decolonizer God. And, in, and you have to give yourself over to the decolonizer God in order for you to save your soul. Like it's the same, do you see that? But, in, but on, in, in, on one hand, Christianity has, has brought net positive, the most good with regards to any other religion in the history of man. The, the America is a Christian country and it is the greatest 
country ever conceived of by men. We've, we've, we've been the most benevolent. We've been the most charitable. We've brought up the most innovations, all these things based on a Christian country. The, the religion that he's trying to switch you over to and the religion that he subscribes to is just one of destruction. I want you to, I'm not going to stop this too, too many more times. There's another six and a half minutes. I'm going to let this really, really play out. But I want you to understand, listen to his words and then ask yourself by the end of this, did he actually offer any kind of solutions at all to this supposed, you know, white monster that has just ravaged the whole world? He's going to start talking about native and, and he's going to talk about like, you know, this is Mexico and this treaty was this and like all this kind of stuff. I am going to interject there because I hear that before. I've heard that before. The whole, the whole colonizer thing is ridiculous because the, the implication is that this is something inherently to Europeans. Like no other ethnic group, no other country colonized or, or took over any other tribe. Or in, nope, it was just the European refugees, as he calls them. <laughs> that kind of sounds like AA, huh? Kind of like, hey, I'm Calvin, I'm an alcoholic, right? Well, alcoholism is a disease. And white supremacy, this concept, is a social as well as a global dis-ease. Not just a disease, but dis-ease. And I have been an agent of it. How has someone like me, called a black man, been an agent of a white colonial corporatist God complex? Let me tell you, when I enabled white people's feelings, when I was more concerned about their fragility, when I was more concerned that this might make them uncomfortable. Is this, I'm speaking to all my black brothers and sisters, is this how you go through your life? Is this how you've gone through your life? Is this how you saw your parents go through their life? Were they more concerned about white fragility, whatever that means? I, I never was, because I never saw them as something separate than my brother and my sister. I never saw them, he is, he is monumentally racist. I mean, he's monumental, like it's off the charts racist. I, I, I don't give that much credence to any other race because we're all one race. It's absurd. I grew up around Samoans, Chinese, Filipino, white, Mexican. I, they were just all friends. <laughs> That's what they were. I wasn't looking at like, oh, how's my white friend feeling today? And, and uh, I got to make sure that he's comfortable or she's com I, I've never had that thought in, before in my head at all. If he's had those thoughts, there's some mental issues going on with him. <laughs> but everything he's about to say is not only absurd, but it's, it's horribly racist. When I deprecated or put other non-white people down, blew out their candles so that mine would burn brighter to master, right? Saying things like, hey, that guy over there, I, I really don't know. And he was actually another black man or a Latino brother or a native man. I have act. So is he saying that white men and women aren't our brothers and sisters? Why does he have such an inferiority complex to another race? Where did that come from? I wasn't given that. He seems, he appears to be around my age. I, my parents didn't raise me that way. I didn't see that in, in movies. I didn't even hear that in music. Now in music, especially if you're going with like the hip hop that I, I grew up on, right? like after Grandmaster Flash, when it was like all like socially conscious or just positive or just artistic and it went into like gangster rap. It was all about killing my own kind. It was all, you're talking about self-deprecating. It was all about putting down black women, putting down my other black brothers, killing them, selling drugs to them. You, you saying that that was socially constructed by white people? So then are, are we just dupes then? Are we, are we just that unintelligent? Are we mindless, mindless drones that just get controlled by white people? Everything that he's saying is reinforcing the exact opposite of what he's actually trying to put forth. That's what I'm saying. That as that model minority, that model minority that speaks the language of the English better than the English, that can articulate white European ideas of civilization, be it art, religion, and sciences, better than Europeans. I want you to also note, that's why I told you in the beginning, he was saying all people, all people, all people. That went way out the window. All he's talking about now are white Europeans. White this, white that, white supremacist that. You understand? That's, all this is, is a racist attack 
on our white brothers and sisters. That with this, that's, this is what this whole TED talk, how is this socio-spiritual evolution? It isn't, that's all the smoke screen. This is just rhetoric. He's been brainwashed and turned into a weapon and he's being sent out to the masses to brainwash and weaponize others who, who are susceptible to this because maybe they most likely due to their own decisions aren't having such a good time of it here. And so it's much easier to blame someone else. And then so he's going to give them a persecutor. He's going to tell them they're victims and he's going to he's going to give them a persecutor. And that's all white Europeans. And then he's going to come as a rescuer. This is what you need to do to rescue yourself. And ironically, the rescuer are white Europeans. So they're, they're your oppressor and your salvation. And that's all a part of this religion that he's that that he succumbed to and that he's trying to peddle. He's the actual disease. He's the actual disease. Prove my whiteness. I'm standing here doing this TED talk to you right now because I do whiteness well. And until we address this, that the foundation of civil... What is whiteness? What is blackness? What is Mexicanness? What is Chinesist? What is Japanesist? What is it? What is, what, what is it? See, there's no... What, how do you define whiteness? Is it just melanin content? Like, is that what it is? How do you define blackness? I'm not actually black, my skin's brown. So how, how I'm not even an individual person, huh? <laughs> if I don't act a certain way, if I don't, if I don't, if I don't like fit into your little square box, I guess I'm not black, which is what's said to me. They say they don't claim me or I'm, I'm, I'm skin folk, but not kin folk and all this kind of stuff because I'm not black enough. What's blackness? What's whiteness? These are all racist concepts meant to keep us divided. They don't actually have a definition. There's no objective definition for blackness or whiteness or, like I said, Indianist. Or, it, it's all ridiculous. Civilization as we know it right now is built on colonial violence. We'll never transform anything. I'd like to share a poem um, that's up here on the PowerPoint. In la es is the phrase. It starts off with, tu eres mi otro yo, and that means you are my other me. Se te hago daño a ti. If I do harm to you, me hago daño a mí mismo. I do harm to myself. Se te amo respeto. If I love and respect you, me amo respeto yo. I love and respect myself. This is the poem of En La Quesh. It basically means that we are each other's mirrors. Unless you're white. When two mirrors face each other, you get infinity. Unless you're white. It goes on and on and on forever. So what lives between us as a human race is infinite possibilities of what we can Unless you're white. And create in the world. But what tricks us out of seeing the infinity in between each other is the smoke between the mirrors. He is the smoke between the mirrors. He is. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He's the smoke between the mirrors. The burning, the residue of colonization. That smoke is still in the air. And it's not colonization. It's him. It's him. Clearly him. We've been smoking it so long that it is now in our mind, it's in our words, it's in what we call good progress and even humanity. So we have to unlearn while simultaneously learning. So I'd like to invite humans called white to confront the sickness. Now, let me also say... Understand that he's only talking about white people that are sick. <laughs> Remember he was talking about all people? I told you, it's not all people, it's just white people. This whole thing is just an attack on white people. So he's like to, he'd like to invite white, I'd like you to invite you, white people, to acknowledge your, your sickness and, and, and disease and that'll be your first step to changing it. Do you remember, you remember in 2020 when white people were kneeling in front of black people? <laughs> How inclusive. <laughs> oh man, it, if you, I don't know how you cannot see it. This, this man is a charlatan. He's a charlatan. He's peddling racism. He's peddling black supremacy. He's talking about all people, all brothers and sisters. No, he's just attacking white people. Okay. Here, here, now he's about to start to pull from history and make it, and, and he believes that it substantiates the, the few little things he's about to cite, that it substantiates his claim that the issue is white European refugees and white Europeans and white supremacy as being the root of all evil. 
And he's going to bring up America, like being the home of the free and the land of the brave, land of the brave, home of the free. And watch. It's, it's, I mean, it's amazing how he was able to put this together, honestly. I need to honor this land. I'm standing on this red carpet. Well, this very space where I'm standing, this is the United States, the USA. I believe in honoring that with the land of the free, home of the brave. So he doesn't believe in honoring. He's about to dishonor. Do, do you see what I'm saying? He says one thing, and then everything he says afterwards dismantles what he says in the beginning. It's like somebody that says, you know what? To tell you the truth, why would they even say to tell you the truth and then speak? Or they say, you know, I don't say this to hurt your feelings when what they're going to say they know is going to hurt your feelings. It's that same thing that he's about to say. He said, I don't want, I want to honor this land. I want to honor this land. He's about to dishonor this land. (laughs) But do you know that this very space where I'm standing before it was called the United States, I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. Before this was called the USA, this very land right here was Mexico. Study the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Learn about how these lands were stolen. And before these lands were called the United States and Mexico, these were all lands of indigenous people. The lands of the Taramura and the Setis, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, Pawnee, Cheyenne. So then did the Mexican people steal it from them? So I want you guys to understand, when he's talking about stolen land on every continent throughout human civilization, there's always been conquerors and conquered. So we're talking about stolen land, it's all stolen, all of it. Native tribes stole land from native tribes. African tribes stole land from other African tribes. Right? You go to Japan, you go to China, you go any, they all conquered other people. Everybody is on technically what he's talking about, stolen land from the original people who had it. We conquer. That has been something that human, the human race has done throughout human civilization. We conquer. And that creates conquered but he's only blaming white Europeans. Like they're the only ones. Everybody else is just kumbaya. Everything else is great. Nope, Africans weren't, they didn't have slaves. They didn't sell anybody off. Nope, nope, the indigenous tribes here in America. Nope, they weren't engaged in in ritual sacrifice and killing each other and conquering. They didn't have slaves either, really. (laughs) Taino, if I go really far east, if I go west, Hawaii. Now, if I put up 10 fingers, See that? See that? I put up 10 fingers. If each one of my fingers is 10%, that's 100%. Before European refugees came to this land, oh yeah, yeah, Europe, the reason why so many people left, man, they couldn't even drink their water. That's why beer, whiskey, and gin is so big. Environmental collapse, spread of disease, plagues, religious persecution, ethnic cleansings, wars. When a massive amount of people are fleeing that failed social order, they're refugees. And now we're spreading that social order, that failed social order has exhausted the planet so much, now we're trying to move to the suburbs of Mars. He's literally trying to say that Europeans wrecked Europe then they spread out and now they're wrecking the world and now we want to move off planet and then the Europeans are just going to wreck that. Is that, is that really, because that's what I heard him say. That, is that really what he's saying? So white Europeans really are just the root of all evil. <laughs> how, ra- how racist can you, he's literally saying that the white Europeans are the undermensch. You know what kind of rhetoric that came from? Read your books. You know what kind of rhetoric that came from? When you start to separate ubermensch, mensch and undermensch, that's what he seems to be saying. Like the white Europeans are the undermensch. They're just the devils. Hmm. Some moon near Jupiter. So before European refugees came to this land, the native population was 100% of the population of these lands. Today, the native population is considered less than 2% 2% of the population of these lands. Hey, brother, they got conquered. That's just the way that works. You can cry in your soup all you want to. But if you can cry for the Native Americans that got conquered, you should be crying for every other civilization that got conquered throughout human history. And I don't hear you saying that. They got conquered. But you know what is, what is different in America? Is that in America, they gave them the path to full citizenship. And that's something that's different. 
Because even when African tribes conquered other African tribes, they didn't integrate them in as full citizens. They became slaves. <laughs> and that, and, and you, you'll see that in other civilizations. But America didn't. Not, not, only, not only did they make them citizens, but America, even as a superpower, still never went out and conquered any other country. Even though we had the best, the, the top military, even today we have the top military and we're still not trying to conquer other people. So he, he's, he's really, he's really only taking, looking at history and skewing it to fit his ideology. He's not looking at the full spectrum. Why is that? I thought he's educated. Man. If you are not familiar with that, that is called an attempted genocide. And we still have not healed. Hold on, hold on. He literally, now, now white Europeans are, are genocidal. Do you know what's genocide, brother? Is that there's more black babies aborted annually than any other ethnic group. Hmm. That trauma. So we are simultaneously the land of the free. Technically, I know it's not genocide, it's eugenics. I know that. I'm just trying to make a point, just for all you people out there going, no, but, but. Home of the brave, but we're also the land of the thief, home of the slave. That's ridiculous. <laughs> he just called us the, the land of the thief and the home of the slave when we were the second nation to abolish slavery. And you know who the first nation was? The white Europeans that he's trying to blame. Do you know who didn't abolish slavery? Africans. <laughs> you can still find slaves in Africa and other parts of the country, other parts of the world, sorry. This man is so absurd. He's so absurd. He literally called this the land of the thief and the home of the slave. Remember when he said he wanted to honor this land? Remember what I told you he was going to do? How is calling this land the home of the thief or the land of the thief and the home of the slave? How is that honoring this land? The land that he's probably American. Right, he has a nice suit. He's he's probably has speaking engagements. Thanks to I guess these white colonial colonizers, refugees. <laughs> and we have not yet reconciled that duality. When we begin to do that therapy, that deep healing, we will release powers and energies. We will restore in Lakesh. Infinity will be. So he said, when we start, how are we going to do it? Like I said, he's not going to offer a solution. He just, he just said some of the most racist crap ever, and he's not even going to, he's not going to continue that thought. He's not going to offer a solution. He's not going to offer the, the silver lining. He's just going to say that until we do this, 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 this. Now he's speaking in generalities again. But remember, what he's talking about is white people. Until white people bow down, there's not going to be any healing. Until they bend the knee, there's not going to be any healing. Until we're now the slave masters holding the whips and putting them on plantations, we're not going to be healed. That's all he wants. He's a black supremacist. He's just as bad as the people he, he calls white supremacists. He's just as bad. You released within us and we will develop power sources and ways of living that does not harm the earth nor each other. How? He didn't offer any solution for not harming the earth. Remember he said it's going to be for all people and ecosystems. He didn't even talk about the environment. He only talked about white people being evil and they're the root of all evil. Now, what does that mean to do that? Joy de Gruleri taught me this, the real definition of the word respect. If you really understand respect, you understand that re means once more, afresh, anew. And respect means to see or look. So if you break down respect, it literally means to look again. A lot of times we look at people, situations, ideas. If we give it one look, we give it one look. But a lot of times we're not looking with our own mind. We're looking through a mind that has been socially engineered. A mind so this is, this is hilarious. This is the last 44 seconds. He's literally about to say that, well, I'll say this. He's the one who's afflicted with what he's about to say. He's the one that's not re-looking. He's the one that has this socially engineered mind that, that came from black supremacists. They brainwashed him. He's the one that's not in control of his own mind. I can tell because he's not balancing out everything he's saying with the objective truth. There's no balance there. If you're going to talk about European refugees and what they did evil, then you also have to talk about 
all the good things that all the good things that they brought. If you're going to talk about an, an African nation, then you have to talk about the good and the bad. If you're going to talk about a Japanese nation, a Chinese nation, it, it, there's good and bad everywhere. Right. You have to have that balance. You can't just pick and choose. Oh, I, I want to put these particular people in a good light. So I'm only going to talk about the good things that they did. I want to put these particular people in a bad light. So I'm only going to talk about the bad things that they did and seem like I'm really justifying it because I'm able to cite um, historical precedent. But you're cherry picking. You're not talking about it in balanced in a balanced form, which means that you have an agenda, which is why he's an activist and he's a brainwashed one. So he's what he's about to say. He's actually afflicted with that which I find ironic. Kind of what our dad always said, what our mom always said, what our faith group tells us, our social media bubble tells us. We're not looking through our own mind, a mind that has been engineered. When we learn to look again at everything, to audit everything in reality, we can begin this healing of civilization. So this is an invitation to humans called white to confront the colonial, corporatist, white God complex within you and around you, and to humans called non-white, to stop enabling white fragility. So all things end and begin with white people. That was his summary. Understand, this is what this all was about. White people are bad, and anybody that's not white, we need to stop enabling their evil. White people need to bend the knee, and everybody that's not white, we need to accept them bending the knee. And then we'll be able to heal, because they've just hurt us. They've hurt us so much, and we need to heal first but that's still not a solution. He still hasn't given an actual solution. To restore in Lakesh, to look again, so that we can help each other, help each other. That's not an echo. Thank you. And then they clap. They clap because they're supposed to. That was all absurd. And that was a great depiction of what's, what's wrong with, with with the black community especially, because a lot of these folks, these black activists who speak this way, they come from the black community. A lot of the BLM leaders, they talk like this. A lot of the race baiters, the race hustlers like Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, they talk like this. They don't offer solutions. What they do is bring chaos. What they do is divide. And they're all racist, they're all black supremacists. And it's unfortunate because this stuff is working on other black brothers and sisters and is working on white folks, white, white brothers and sisters as well, who, be, who actually believe in white guilt and believe in white fragility. And they actually succumb to that stuff, which is why they bent the knee in 2020, which is the most ridiculous thing I had ever seen. Nobody needs to bow before me. Just like I don't, I'm not gonna bow before anyone else, but God, I'm not gonna bow before another man or another woman. I'm not gonna bow before my brothers and sisters. We're equal, right? As soon as you have somebody bow before you, you're not talking about equality or equity or diversity or inclusion or anything like that. What you're doing is a class system. They're, they're less and you're more. So I'm glad you sent this out to me, Doug. Um, that's my breakdown. Um, I think you should send it out to the folks that you said were confused. Maybe this will give them perspective. Maybe they agree with me. Maybe they don't. But that's my take on it. And as always, as you guys are moving through the dark, I'm over here trying to help you to turn on the light. You guys be well.